This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another edition of Edmonton Oilers Discussion here on the channel this afternoon. And let me tell you, every time we get an off day, the discussion is just going to be pretty much centered around one thing, I feel. That's the tough part about this month of February as we get into that final week. And of course, the trade deadline day is for the next how many ever days, count them up if you will, we're going to be running around chickens with our heads cut off hearing rumor this, rumor that, what about this guy, oh we should trade this guy, or this or that or the other thing, and let me tell you, sorry I just got to get my wallet out of my pocket, hard sitting here on that, but it's just going to be nuts, that's, if I learned one thing from last year, is it is going to be an absolutely <laughs> nutty month, you're going to have your game days where everything's focused on the game. Everything until about 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning the next day will be focused on the game. And the trade speculation will run wild for about a uh, solid... Rest of the day, rest of the day, and all of a sudden Tyson will get home at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and say, hey, hey, look, i got to get a video up, and the first thing I'll see, because obviously it's running rampant since 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, is trade speculation. So that said, so shall we sit down and take care of business number one when it comes to the trade deadline for the Edmonton Oilers? Realistically, the actual business that has to be attended to or that could come up to be attended to, because here we are ready to attend to it again after December 1st passing. If you get that reference, you get where I'm going, and let's get this going. With that, hit that subscribe button if you're here for a good time this month of February. I'm making it sound like a bad time, but it's a good bad time. Who knows these stats? Anyone in the comments section below, are you able to get me the, who these stats belong to? The team name, Carpat? Well, that should definitely figure it out for you pretty darn quick. The Edmonton Oilers only have one link right now to that team, as far as I'm aware, officially. And that being Yessa Pugliarvi, who's played there for 42 games this season. 17 goals, 24 assists, and a 41-point total for less than point-per-game totals in the Liga this year. There you go. All right, that's Yessa Pugliarvi. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's what he's up to. And he, pff, We all talk about him once in a while, but... When's the last time we checked on Yesa Puliarvi on Dolany TV? It's been a long, long while, that's for sure. So, 48 penalty minutes as well for Yesa, so he's been taking a couple more penalties than normal compared to his earlier careers in La Liga, but that's okay. He's a plus 39 and a minus 18 for a plus 21, so he's been on the ice for a lot of goals. I know, I, again, I always cater, try to cater to the guys who are all about plus minus, but let's just start fancying over to these stats here. He's got seven goals on the power play and 311 shots. That uh, kind of sounds high. Now for reference, I've got a guy's stats that you may be familiar with. Mr. Alex Ovechkin, who this year in the NHL has 37 goals. He's one off the league lead. And let me tell you what he's shooting for a percentage this year. He's shooting .152. You know how many shots that is? That's 240 four shots this season for Alex Ovechkin, give or take one, depending how you round the math. So 244 for Alex Ovechkin. That's through 50-ish games. I don't know exactly how many games the Capitals have played, but that's through 50-ish games. Yes, Apuliarvi is shooting the puck. Let's just think about this. Shooting the puck at a 5.5% shooting percentage, but he's shooting the puck per game. Per game. Seven and a half times okay so this is uh this is where i get a little dumbfounded i'm not exactly like i trust me i did my research i walked in i looked at the stats beforehand i'm like huh this doesn't even make sense this honestly no this <laughs> how does this work so i it's his career worst shooting percentage career high in goals but his career worst shooting percentage in the liga he's got 5.5 on 311 shots seven and a half per game Guys, for reference, Connor McDavid's lucky to hit five every five games, right? He's lucky to hit five once every five games, I should say. That's how the proper phrasing there is. So this is the mind-numbing, mind-blowing stat that is Yessa Pugliarvi. He's shot the puck 311 times and only scored 17 goals. I know I was harping on it a lot earlier in the season. Everyone said it would go up, 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 up. It's gone down. It's 
gone down. I think it was like 6.9 earlier in the season. It's now 5.5. So that's a little bit alarming to me, and that leaves me right here in the discussion, the actual discussion of the video, is the simple fact of what is Yesa Puliarvi worth? Like, how, based on what I just showed you, based on the whole media circus, the whole circus in Edmonton, the whole going overseas circus that Yesa Puliarvi and the Oilers have caused here, how do you actually equate any value here? And I know the Oilers are kind of probably, if they're going to trade Yesa Puliarvi, looking for a team, I believe, according to Jim Matheson, um, a, a team that is willing to wait on Yesa Puliarvi. So, problem is, what's what's waiting? Are you waiting for the shooting percentage to go up? Are you waiting on the, uh, like, what are what are you waiting on? So I'll just read you Jim Matheson's tweet here. It's it's quite something. If Oilers are going to trade Puliarvi's rights for the deadline, it's presumably to a team that can wait on him. So that's exactly quote for quote what I was telling you. Keep running out Anthony Siu for Puliarvi because of Holland Iserman close ties from Detroit, but guess we'll see. So that's Jimmy just throwing it out there in the old uh, universe. And then Andres Athanasiu is a complicated NHL winger, top three in the NHL speed. Some nights hell on wheels to try and stop, other nights disengage, but nobody knows that more than Holland. Yes, if Price right, fully expect Edmonton will make pitch. First round pick, probably not in play for anybody. So there you go, right? So you eliminate a first round pick, suddenly yes, Pugliarvi creeps back into that conversation. Yes, and I, 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 I know some people have their misgivings on Twitter with Jim Matheson, but he's bringing up an interesting logical point, right? Is the value for Yessa is not great, but is it good enough? That's the question. It doesn't have to be great value, but is it good enough to get an upgrade for the Oilers this season? That's kind of the question here within the whole topic, no matter what side of Yes, Apulia RV, no matter what side of anything you're on right now, is is the value good enough to get something valuable back the other way to improve the Oilers roster? Or is it a kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of deal where you trade a problem, but as soon as you do, you're getting a problem back, right? You're damned if you don't trade that problem, but you're damned by trading for a problem. You get where I'm going? It's It's complicated for sure. So I'm really really kind of undecided on this one. Honestly, you look at Yessi Puliarvi, yeah, sure, it's, it'd be nice to get something for him, but realistically, you look at that 311 shots, well, that's great, right? Yessi Puliarvi shooting the puck, that's great, but problem is he's in the Liga. He's shot 311 times and has a 5.5 shooting percentage. I, I realistically don't know the full crop of goaltenders in the Liga, but I'm probably going to guess they're not better and not leaps and bounds better than NHL goaltenders. Just based on my biased opinion to being an NHL hockey fan, let's let's just count that. If you're tuning in from Finland, please tune me in on how great the goaltenders over in the Liga are. But guys, that's that's astounding. 311 shots and the guy has 17 goals. That's that's if I'm an NHL GM, that's what I'm pointing at that this guy is like going over to Liga and has 17 goals on 311 shots. That's stat number one. But in all that, he's only a point per game player in the league as well. So how do you how do you balance that out? Terrible shooting percentage, tremendous amount of shots, don't get me wrong, but no results for it, realistically, right, compared to Alex Ovechkin. And secondary to that, he's really not tearing up the needle. Like if we go over to the Liga standings here in terms of top scorers, if I can find that. Uh, let me get the English stats, team stats, player stats, player stats. Let me get over to the player stats, and they've got everything here in Liga finish. And so, yeah, you think about where Yes Pugliarvi ranks in Liga scoring. He ranks in the top six. He's actually only four points off of the top scoring player on the league. You owe uh, Lamu Lamico, if I've got that right. Oh, man, that's a handle. Has 42 points with Carpot, which is one extra game than Yesa, but that's, right, like, yeah, sure, goal scoring is not that tremendous in the Liga by any means, by the looks of it. 26 goals in 17 games, or in 42 games is the league high, but, yeah, you think about Yes Pugliari, right, is you look at where these shots are coming from, you look at how many shots, it looks like a lot of guys shoot the puck. It's like a lot of guys get directed to shoot the puck, but... 
The next highest shot total in the Liga is Chris D'Souza, who has 19 goals, 17 assists, 36 points. So factor in that where you will. 264, so that's almost a whole 50 less than he has to pull RV. So guys, the question remains, and I think that's realistically our biggest unknown at the trade deadline, the biggest challenge at the trade deadline, is we have this great asset that's good enough. Not great, not right right it's good enough but is it good enough to get us a thing of value and that's yes a pulley rv in a nutshell is he valuable enough to get us that key piece for the playoffs or is he just good enough to keep as a trade chip that's the question guys i'll pose it to you right now i'm tyson this stall in atv thank you so much for tuning in i will catch you as always in the next one